The following is tape number fourteen, on the Nectar of Devotion series, given by His Divine Grace, A. C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded between October twentieth and November fourteenth, nineteen seventy-two, in Brindavan, India. Following the footprints of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as enunciated by the six Goswamis. Sirup Sanatan Vattaraguna, Sijib Gopal Vattaraguna. Uh, <coughs> so, we have to follow the authorities. We cannot manufacture. There is no need of research work. Uh, simply, if we follow the chalked out path given by the great authorities, that will help us. Yes, gone. Therefore, devotional service and practice means utilizing our different sensory organs in service to Krishna. Some of the senses are meant for acquiring knowledge, and some are meant for executing the conclusions of our thinking, willing, and feeling. Thinking, feeling, and willing. So practice means employing both the mind and the senses in practical devotional service. This practice is not for developing something artificial. For example, a child learns or practices to walk. This walking is not unnatural. The walking capacity is there originally in the child. And simply by a little practice, he walks very nicely. <laughs> Similarly, Nitta Siddha Krishna Bhakti Sadha Kavuna. Not that by practicing something uh, external, not natural, we become accustomed. That is also sometimes there. But this devotional service, Krishna consciousness, is not that type of practice. Uh, it is there already. Nitta Siddha Krishna Bhakti. Sadha Kamuna. Uh, not actually by artificial practice. It is there. Sabanadi Suddha Chitta Karayuda. It is to be awakened. Uh, exactly, just like uh, the same child, by nature uh, he can walk. But still, if some help is offered to the child, he walks very nice. So this uh, practice, vidhi-mārga, devotional service, uh, is simply to awaken the dormant Krishna consciousness within the human being. Uh, just like it is happening in our preaching work in the Western countries, these European-American boys, they uh, never heard the name of Krishna four years ago, but they had taken to Krishna consciousness seriously because it was already dormant in them. It has been simply awakened. By chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, this uh, pure uh, vibration of transcendental sound has enlivened them and they are awakened to Krishna consciousness. It is not that artificially they have taken. Uh, it is sure. Uh, anyone can test how much they have advanced in Krishna consciousness, how they are firmly convinced in Krishna consciousness, because it has been awakened. The nature which was dormant, that has been awakened by... Uh, that is the propaganda work of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He wanted... Uh, that in every town and every village of the world, on the surface of the globe, uh, his name, the preaching of Sankirtan movement, inaugurated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, should be preached. The purpose was the dormant Krishna consciousness is there, everywhere, that we are experiencing. Now, in Africa also, uh, who are supposed to be not very advanced in civilization, 
they are also very nicely taking part in this Krishna consciousness movement. Uh, European, American, they are advanced, civilized people. But even in Africa, we are having very good success. They are becoming Vaishnavas. So, and it is in the Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, so, these Kiratas are the Africans. So, they are also becoming interested. Hun, Andha, eh, and others who are considered to be eh, eh, low born according to Vedic civilization. But still, eh, the uh, Vedic civilization does not. Uh, prohibit anyone to come to Krishna consciousness. Uh, by our karma, we may be high born or low born. That does not matter. Ahitu ki aprati hata. Krishna consciousness cannot be checked by any material impediment. That is not possible. Ahitu ki aprati hata. It is natural. Uh, and uh, Krishna says, Manhipartha uh, Bepastritya Jeepishu Papajuna. He says that uh, even though uh, so some people are considered to be Papajoni, low ball, it doesn't matter, but he can accept the shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna. Prabhavishna Venava. Prabhavishna Venava. Still more global than these people. Suddhanti, they can be purified. Uh, if they actually take shelter of a pure devotee, they can be purified. That is the injunction of the Shastra, Sukhdev Goswami. Uh, Suddhanti, and uh, people may argue how such low-born people can be purified. That reply is Prabhavishna Venava. It is the supreme power of Lord Vishnu. It is possible. Krishna says. Now, Krishna says that everyone can be delivered uh, simply by the process of Krishna consciousness. So whose duty is to enlighten them to Krishna consciousness? Uh, I was just talking with Goswami Ji, Harichayan Goswami. Uh, whose duty it is to enliven people to Krishna consciousness? It is the duty of Guru. We came to this conclusion. And who is Guru? Srotriyam Brahmanishta. That means perfectly learned in Vedic literature and firmly convinced in Brahma realization. That means first class Brahmi. So if the first class brahmanas do not take care of this papa journey, then who will deliver them? Uh, here the, some agitation is going on that this moment, Krishna consciousness moment, is killing uh, Hindu religion. Uh, you see? Just see their poor fund of knowledge. Uh, it is the duty of the first class brahman to enlighten this Papa Joni. Otherwise, who will enlighten them? Huh? Guru will enlighten them. And who is Guru? Srotiram Brahmanistham. Brahmanistham means he must be Brahmin. So, if the uh, so called Brahmins, they do not take care of them, and if they remain Brahmins, uh, uh, limited within some limited area, do not go outside, then who will deliver them? Huh? So these are not very sound arguments. Uh, it is very, uh, what is called, hmm. crippled ideas. Uh, the Brahmana means Udara. The opposite word of Brahmana is Kripana, who is very miser. A Brahmana cannot be miser. Even a hundred years ago, uh, the Brahmanas would give chance to anyone to become Brahmana. I have got so many instances. That is the duty of Brahmana. Pathan, pathan. The Brahmana should be learned. And uh, Brahmana should make others learned, other Brahmin. Not that he simply satisfies that he is Brahmana 
and nobody should become Brahman. No. He should make others Brahman. Just like a big lawyer, he makes his assistants lawyer. Uh, a, a professor, learned professor, he makes others professor. Otherwise it is called gyanakhal, uh, miser, and the knowledge should be distributed. Any scientist discovers, they distribute it. Similarly, Brahmana should be Udara. Not only he should personally know what is Brahma, but he should distribute the knowledge. Therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Bharat Bhumite Manusya Janma Hila Jaha. Janma Sartha Kari Karo Paropaka. It is the duty of the Brahmana. Paropaka. And without being human being, how he can become a Brahmana? Cats and dogs cannot become Brahmana. The perfect human being means Brahmana. The first class perfect being. That is Brahmana. And Brahmana's duty is for Parupaka, Patana Patana Jajana Jajana, Dana Patigra, Satkarma Nipuna Vipra Mantra Tantra Visharada, Avaishnava, Guru Nasasya, one who is Vaishnava, just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he becomes Guru. Because he is Udar. Vaishnava means paradukha dukhi. Mancha kalpataru bhasya kipasindu bhaya bhasya. Patitanam pavanit. Vaishnava is patitanam pavan. He can deliver all the fallen souls. So we have become crippled, therefore we are talking this that. Uh, this Krishna consciousness movement is uh, killing our Hindu principles. No. It is really, actually, Vedic principle that one should be learned and he should distribute the knowledge for paropaka. That is Brahminism. Paradukha dukhi kripam mudijya samaham upapadvi lokanang hitakarinam these are the statements in this heart. Nana sastra vichara nai kanipino sad dharma sangasthapaka. Luka lang hitokarino. The Goswamis. They uh, uh, compiled this. Nupa Goswami compiled this Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu uh, not for the study, a few selected persons. Luka uh, lang hitokarino. For the benefit of the whole human society. And actually that is happening. We have translated the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu in English and we have got the greatest cell of this book. Everyone is picking up. It is a study book in the Temple University of the United States. They like it. But it is required. We have got so much treasure house of knowledge. They should be, each and every book should be, at least Vaishnava literature, Bhagavat literature, should be translated into English and distributed all over the world. Uh, that is lokanang hitokari, uh, to benefit the whole human society, not to remain crippled within a boundary. Uh, that is not Brahminism, that is not Vaishnavism. Thank you, Vedya. Hare Krishna. Practice means employing our senses in some particular type of work. Therefore, devotional service and practice means utilizing our different sensory organs in service to Krishna. Some of the senses are meant for acquiring knowledge, and some are meant for executing the conclusions of our thinking, feeling, and willing. So practice means employing both the mind and the senses in practical devotional service. This practice is not for developing something artificial. For example, a child learns and practices to walk. This walking is not unnatural. The walking capacity is there originally in the child, and simply by a little practice he walks very nicely. <laughs> Similarly, devotional service to the Supreme Lord is the natural instinct of every living entity. Even uncivilized men like the Aborigines offer their respectful obeisances to something wonderful exhibited by nature's law. And they appreciate that behind some wonderful exhibition or action, there is something supreme. So this consciousness, though lying dormant in those who are materially contaminated, is found in every living entity. And when purified, this is called Krishna consciousness. So, in, in the minds of the jungle people, there is obedience. 
to the Supreme. As soon as there is some thunderbolt strike, so they offer obeisances. As soon as they see a big sea, ocean, they offer obeisances. Uh, offering obeisances to the great, that is natural. That is the gradual appreciation of the uh, potency or energy of the Supreme Law. Because uh, whatever we see, uh, whatever there is, that nothing but different a manifestation of the energy of the Supreme Law. Parasya Brahmana Shakti. We can appreciate the potencies, the energies of the Supreme Law. Anyway, as I explained yesterday, uh, the potency is there in the seed. As Krishna says, Vijohaṁ Sarvabhūtānāṁ a big banyan tree is concentrated within a small seed, uh, smaller than the uh, mustard seed. There is a potency of a very big tree. There is a story, uh, it is a very instructive story, that Narudmani was passing uh, to go to Vaikuntha. And on the way, one very learned scholar, Brahman, met him, and he inquired from Nargmuni where he was going. Nargmuni said that, I am going to see Narayan, my Lord. So the Brahman asked, asked him, oh, you are going to meet Narayan, will you kindly inquire for me when my uh, when I shall be liberated. Narmani said, yes, I shall inquire. Similarly, on the way, he met one cobbler. He also inquired, Narmani, where he was going. And he said, will you kindly inquire from Lord Narayana when he would be liberated? So when Narad Muni met Narayana, so he inquired because he is saintly person, he promised that such and such Brahmin inquired like this and a, and a cobbler also inquired like this. So Narayana said, the, this cobbler will be uh, liberated in this life and that Brahmana will take some time, some many births. So Narayana Muni became astonished that he, he was a learned scholar and Brahmin, and he would take so much time and the cobbler would be liberated in this life. Oh, what is the reason, sir? So Narayana gave him one needle and uh, he requested him that when they inquire what the Narayana was doing, you can say that Narayana was pulling one elephant through the hole of the needle, this side and that side. So when he came back, the Brahmana said, Sir, you are uh, I offer my respect for obeisance unto you and Narayana. We cannot believe this, that through the needle, or through the hole of a needle, an elephant is being passed this side and that side. And when it was informed to the cobbler, he began to cry. He said, Oh, my Narayana is so powerful that he can do everything. He believed. Immediately, then yes, for Narayana it is possible to pull the elephant through the hole of the needle, this side and that. So Narad Muni inquired, ah, how do you believe this? 
the other person, the Brahman, he is learned person, <coughs> he did not believe. How do you believe it? What is your conviction? He says, sir, I believe in this way because I am sitting under this tree, this is a banyan tree, and so many, uh, what is called, figs are falling down, and each fig there are thousands of small seeds, and in each seed there is a banyan tree. So if Narayan can keep thousands of banyan trees within this fig fruit, uh, how it is not possible for him to uh, pull an elephant through the hole of a uh, needle. Uh, so, this is called faith. The faith is not blind. There is proof. He, the cobbler, was not blindly believing that Narayan was pulling an elephant through the hole of a needle. But he sees practically the potency, the power, uh, of the Lord, Bijo uh, Hamsarva Bhutana, how he keeps all the potencies of the banyan tree within the seed. Uh, so otherwise there is no meaning all powerful. He can do uh, whatever he likes. Inconceivable. Srila Jiva Goswami therefore explained that unless we believe inconceivable potency of the Lord, uh, then we cannot understand the activities. parasa sakti vividhai vasyate sabhaviki jnana vala kriyasa. We cannot judge how things are happening, uh, but we have to believe. Therefore, Vedic knowledge is so important. We cannot make research, we cannot judge. Simply, if we take the Vedic truth, uh, just like we have several times explained, the Vedas accept the cow dung pure, whereas the stool of other animal is impure. So we have to accept like that. Uh, so, Vedavani. Vedavani means you cannot deny it, you cannot argue on it. Uh, you have to accept as it is. Uh, therefore, learned scholar, uh, when he speaks something, he gives evidence from the Vedas, Sruti, Sruti Praman. That is the best evidence. Gone. There are certain prescribed methods for employing our senses and mind in such a way that our dormant consciousness for loving Krishna will be invoked. As much as the child with a little practice can begin to walk. In Goswami is, or in the Pancharatra system, in the Shastras, the regulatory principles are so made that if we practice it uh, gradually, our dormant Krishna consciousness will be awakened. Therefore, these prescribed rules and regulations, as it is given in the Shastra, and confirmed by the acharyas. Nartam uh, Das Thakur says, Tadero Charano Sebi. We have to follow the footprints of the acharyas. Uh, acharya means parampara. Uh, one acharya is following the previous acharya. The acharya does not manufacture anything, something novel. Uh, he follows the previous acharya. And therefore he is, he is Acharya, and one who follows Acharya Man Purusha Veda, Acharya Upasanam, and the Bhagavad Gita actually. So we have to accept the uh, principles laid down by the Acharya. Tadero Charana Sevi Bhakta Saneva. Rupa Raghu Natho Pade Haive Akuti Kabe Hama Bujhava Se Jugala Piri. Nartam Dasaru. These are Nartam Dasaru's versions are accepted as Vedic versions. Suti Prama, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says that the statements of Nartam Das Thakur are as good as Vedic evidences. Therefore, we quote from Nartam Das Thakur often. <coughs> not only not only Nartam Das Thakur, <coughs> Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, 
and the six Goswamis, they are authorities. So we have no difficulty. Tadero Charano Sevi Bhakta Sanivas. That's all. Let us follow the footprints of the Acharyas, Goswamis, and live together as sincere, serious devotees. Then our life is successful. It is not very difficult. Bhakta Sanivas, Tadero Charano We should live together as devotees and follow the footprints of the Acharya. Don't manufacture concoction. Then it will be spoiled. Simply try to follow. They will protect. They will give protection. Because Krishna says, Aham tva sarva papi If we take shelter of the Acharya, that means we take shelter of Krishna. Jasya prasad ar bhagavat prasad. If the Acharya, Guru, is satisfied, then we must know certainly that Krishna is satisfied. Just sap prasadad bhagavat prasad. Acharya mang vijanyat. So, uh, this is the principle, and the Acharyas give us direction. It is not very difficult. Simply we have to be, become very serious and sincere. Uh, then everything is all right. Gone. One who has no basic walking capacity cannot walk by practice. Similarly, Krishna consciousness cannot be aroused simply by practice. Mm-hmm. Artificially practice Krishna consciousness uh, is not possible. Uh, there is Krishna consciousness, nitya siddha krishna bhakti sadha kavuna. Uh, it is not by the practice, but uh, following certain methods, uh, just like uh, sex impulse is there already in everyone's heart. When there is opportunity, uh, it becomes awakened. Uh, it is not that artificially a dull stone can be uh, awakened in sex impulse. No. In human being or animal, in living being, there is sex impulse, uh, but it becomes awakened in a favorable circumstance. Similarly, if we keep ourselves in favorable circumstances, uh, that means bhakta sane uh, living with pure devotees without any material desires, uh, uh, then the Vrindavan, the living in Vrindavan, what is the meaning of living? Because bhakta sane here whoever comes, he comes for the purpose of developing devotional attitude, not for any, here nobody comes for making business or making money. If anyone comes, he makes offense, dham aparad. Uh, dham aparad, it is called, there are many uh, kinds of dham aparad, nam aparad, seva aparad. There are aparad, offenses. That, that will be described in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So, here in Vrindavan dham, nobody should make any business. Nobody should try to uh, satisfy senses in Vrindavan Dham, then his living in Vrindavan Dham will be profitable. Of course, anyone living in Vrindavan Dham is uh, fortunate because the Dham itself has its own power. But Anukulena uh, Krishna Nisiradam, similarly, if we live in the Dham in Anukul way, favorable way, then our uh, achievement or uh, ultimate success is very easy. Uh, if you commit offenses, it will be delayed. But still, anyone, somewhere or other, who is living in Vrindavan, uh, sticking to the dust of Vrindavan, he is certainly benefited. Gone. Actually, there is no such practice. practice. When we wish to develop our innate capacity for devotional service, there are certain processes which, by our accepting and executing them, will cause that dormant capacity to be invoked. Such practice is called sadhana bhakti. Hmm. The practice, following the rules and regulation of Shastra and Acharya's direction of the spiritual master, that is called sadhana bhakti. Uh, that any, anyone can do, provided he is serious. Adho sadhya tato sadhu sangha atav bhajana kriya. This bhajana kriya means sadhana bhakti. Uh, so, if our bhajana kriya is proper and uh, in the line 
then anatha nivittisya then all the anathas unwanted things bad habits that will be immediately vanquished uh, after anartha nivritti tato nishtha tato ruchi tatha shakti tato bhava in this way we shall increase our attitude of devotion and selfish ultimately getting shelter of the lotus feet of the lord every living entity under the spell of material energy is held to be in the abnormal condition of madness in the shrimad bhagavatam it is said generally the conditioned soul is mad because he is always engaged in activities which are the causes of bondage and suffering spirit soul in its original condition is joyful blissful eternal and full of knowledge nunam pramatta kurute vikarma this materialistic persons they are mad mad pisachi paile jano motichchanna hoy maya grosto jiber sahi dasha upaj we those who are materialistic persons uh, we are mad after sense gratification exactly like a person who is ghostly haunted he speaks all sorts of nonsense similarly in our material condition we speak simply all nonsense unless we engage our tongue in the talking of krishna katha vachangshi vaikuntha gunanu varnan unless we engage our tongue in describing about the glories of vaikuntha vaikuntha means the supreme personality of god then we shall be talking politics and other nonsense and waste our time huh? Huh? just like the frog the frog is crying uh, <coughs> that that means dyu uh, bhasati daduri ke va in the bhagavata it is said that the we have got tongue but if we don't use the tongue for krishna seva <coughs> sevan mukhi hi jiv bhado our devotion and service begins from the tongue people will uh, how service begins from the tongue yes sevan mukhi hi jiv bhado same va surat ah so the tongue is very good instrument for developing devotion and service Uh, if we don't use this tongue in devotion and service, then it is compared with the tongue of the frog. Jiva daduri ke wo. Why? Why my tongue is so nice? Why it is compared with the tongue of a frog? Because the frog uh, crowing, kakar kong kakar kong, that means inviting the snake. Uh, the snake cannot see where is the frog, but by hearing the sound, crowing sound, uh, this snake can understand. Here is my food. So his crowing sound will be stopped as soon as it is swallowed up by the snake. Similarly, we have got this tongue, human body. It is not the cat's tongue or dog's tongue, or tiger's tongue or hog's tongue. it is the human being talk so this should be engaged for krishna's service uh, by chanting hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna this is the tongue is being used and tasting krishna prasad if we simply if we do not read any shastra if we simply chant hare krishna mantra the tongue is and simply we do not eat anything which is not offered to krishna if we take this vow that my tongue should be used only for krishna uh, by chanting hare krishna mantra and chanting chanting when i become hungry i take some little prasad actually that was the original process of paramahansa goshami they used to uh, krishna kirtan gana natana paro their tongue was always used for krishna kirtan कृष्ण कीर्तन गान नर्तन परो प्रेमा मृताम निधि धीरा धीर जन प्रियो प्रिय करो निर्म सरो पूजित श्री चैतन्य कृपा भरो भुवि भव भारा हंतार को बंदे रूप सनातन रघु जुगो श्री जीव गोपाल सो दिगोस्वामीज 
used to spend their time by using uh, Haridas Thakur, uh, uh, Haridas Namacharya Sila Haridas Thakur. He was using his tongue. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna. Very simple thing, uh, but it is difficult also. Uh, so gradually, uh, we should not imitate, but follow the footprints of great saintly persons, acharyas, and then gradually we shall practice tadero charana sevi, bhakta sanema. Uh, this society, Krishna consciousness society, is made uh, just to create some devotees, so that people by the association of the devotees and following the footprints of the Goswamis, they will be automatically elevated to the transcendental platform. This is the meaning of Krishna consciousness society. It is not a, a joint mess that you bring something, I bring something, and let us cook together and eat and sleep. It is not that society. We should always be engaged. Always we shall use our tongue. Uh, so, Sevi <coughs> Bhakti, it is very important passage given by Narpanda Sthaku. Tadero Charana Sevi. Our business should be how to execute the orders of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Goswami, uh, the Saragoswami, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Prithivite ache jato nagaradi gram, sarvatra prachar hai He wanted that uh, human being, those who have taken birth as a human being in India, they should take the cause, the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and spread all over the world. Janma sattakari karo paropaka. See, India is made for doing uh, good to others. India is not meant for exploiting others. That is not India's mission. From the very beginning, from long, long distant place, people used to come here to learn a spiritual uh, advancement of life. It is said that Lord Jesus Christ also came here, and He lived here for twelve years. Similarly, many Chinese scholars and transcendentals used to come. So, India is a land of knowledge and culture, especially spiritual knowledge, since very, very long time. Uh, so especially those who are born in India, they should take advantage of the privilege. Unfortunately, uh, they are criticizing the foreigners, uh, those who have taken to it, uh, they are suspecting. It is very, very degradable fact. Uh, but anyway, that is the way, that is the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that those who are intelligent persons, intelligent Indians, they should take advantage <coughs> of the gifts of the great sages and saintly persons, make their life successful, and preach the cult all over the world. Uh, that is the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Our Krishna consciousness movement is meant for that purpose. Go on. Only by his implication in material activities has he become miserable, temporary, and full of ignorance. This is due to vikarma. Vikarma means actions which should not be done. Therefore, we must practice sadhana bhakti, which means to offer mangalaratrika, deity worship, in the morning, to refrain from certain material activities, to offer obeisances to the spiritual master, and to follow many other rules and regulations which will be discussed here one after another. These practices will help one to become cured of madness. As a man's mental disease is cured by the directions of a psychiatrist, so this sadhana bhakti cures the conditioned soul of his madness under the spell of maya, material illusion. <laughs> so, as they are mentioned, the first principle is that every devotee must try to rise early in the morning. Uh, that is first business. This practice should be done first. Uh, no one should sleep uh, more than six hours, or if you want to sleep more, but you must rise early in the morning at four o'clock. Uh, attend the Arutri, Mangalarti. Mangalarti means auspicious beginning of your day. If you uh, stand before Mangalarti, 
in Vrindavan, you see, you know, every temple, as soon as there is four o'clock, uh, the uh, ding-dong bell immediately begins. People can rise early in the morning, take bath in the Jamuna, and visit the deities in the temple. There is no necessity of passing any examination and taking B.A. degree for devotion and service. Uh, simply, you have to follow the regular teachings. Then automatically you will become spiritualized. Uh, very simple method. Vrindavan is specially meant for that purpose. Why people come to Vrindavan? To take the advantage. Here the atmosphere is surcharged with devotion and service. We should take advantage of it. Uh, this is called sadhana bhakti. Sadhana. Sadhana bhakti means you have to uh, practice it. Uh, and uh, it does not require much education. It does not depend on your riches that you have to become a very rich man to follow the regulative principle to rise early in the morning. Anyone can rise. You know. It is simply a practice. You can take bath in the Jamuna. It is simply practice. Uh, you can visit the temples early in the morning. It is simply practice. Uh, so, this is called sadhana bhakti. Practicing. Go on. 